Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Sarah from Who I Am Among the Pages. And thank you so much for deciding to watch this video. If you're new, thanks for deciding to stop by. If you're not, thank you so much for sticking around and coming back. So today I am doing by far the biggest book haul I have done on this channel. And normally I don't ever <laughs> buy this many books at a time. I will buy one or two maybe three or four, um, but never as many as I have gotten my hands on this time around. Um, so like the title says, they have come from a variety of sources. Um, most of them have actually come from eBay. I discovered recently that you can buy like a lot of books uh, for a very inexpensive price from several diff different sources. And I for one found a lot of Stephen King books, I think it was six. Um, on eBay for 20 bucks and it was from the Northeast or North Middle East or not Middle East like Midwest um, it was in it was in Wisconsin I don't know I don't know what you consider that but it was from like the greater area um, Goodwill so the money did go to charity and I felt pretty good about spending my money with them um, some of them did also come from thrift books I have never used thrift books before um, I've had an interesting experience, so I do want to talk about it. Some of them came from Barnes & Noble, and finally some of them did come from Amazon. I do try desperately to not uh, buy from Amazon, because I would much rather support local bookstores, or just, you know, even if it is a chain store, I'd rather support a chain store around here. Um, or, you know, at very least, if I'm buying, you know, from thrift books per se, at least they're second hand, so it has a slightly less environmental impact. Um, this video is going to be kind of long because of all of them, and I'm going to have to stop like halfway through and get a bunch off the shelf because you can see some of the new ones behind me, if you can figure out which ones are new. And I'm sorry if the camera starts shaking at all, my dog and cat are like playing around my feet where all the books are. Yeah, see? Um, so I could very well lead to some turbulence because they are like all over them right now. Let's get started though. So I'm going to begin with what I got off of eBay. And the first two are Four Past Midnight and Rose Matter, both by Stephen King. So when I was in high school, I was very into Stephen King for a while. I read Christine and The Shining, Salem's Lot. Um, I feel like I read something else, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, I was really into him for a while, and I've really been struggling to find what I want to write. Um, I've, I've just been struggling, period. But writing is one of them <laughs> that I was having issues with. And I've recently, recently discovered that I love writing horror. And, um, you know, after talking to some of my professors that are writers, you know, they definitely encouraged me to go for it. So I've been getting into writing horror. And I loved reading it, so I decided to go back and get Stephen King books that I had never read before. Um, because who better to learn from the art, uh, the art of horror writing, than by reading the King himself. So Four Past Midnight is a short story collection. Um, I do believe there's four or five in here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. So there's Straight Up Midnight, which is an introductory note. The Langoliers, Secret Window, Secret Garden, The Library Policeman, and The Sun Dog. So I am looking forward to reading this because I myself really enjoy writing short stories and I don't do it a whole lot. And it has these really cool illustrations between the different uh, stories in this book and it's a nice chunky like uh, mass market paperback and I just love them and I'm curious because I just noticed on the cover it has the price and it was $6.99 when it was bought new from Signet uh, Publishers so let me see when this one was printed it looks like it was printed in 1991 so it is nine years older than me and I think that is super cool to have books that are even older than I am like you know not just having been written before I was born but have physically existed longer than I have and my bangs are just not behaving I just got a shower and like tried to, to like do a blowout and it didn't work okay so the rose matter 
I don't know a whole lot about. I know it is a novel. Um, let me see if I can find a summary. This isn't really the book that made me buy uh, the lot as a whole. It was definitely some of the others that I'll talk about in a minute. This one was printed in 1996, so this is four years older than me. Um, and I cannot... Oh, here we go. Rose Daniel saw the single drop of blood on the bedsheet, and she knew she must escape from her macabre marriage before it was too late. But escape was not as easy as fleeing to a new city, picking a new name, finding a new job, lucking out with a new man. Her husband, Norman, was a cop. And with the cop's training, a cop's technology, a cop's bloodhound instincts. And even worse, Norman was, well, Norman. Rose knew that she had been married to a savage brute. Now she realized that she was being tracked down by a terrifying monster. But the only place she found to hide could be the most dangerous of all. I've also come from a background of horror, not horror, uh, mystery novels, and uh, my mom loved Patricia Cornwell and Janet Ivanovich and Tess Garretts and Kathy Reichs. Um, so this very much sounds like a like Criminal Minds episode, and I am so excited because if there's anybody that could add something even to Criminal Minds, it's Stephen King. And I really like the picture on the back. I love the um, older like author, I don't want to say profile picture, it's not a profile picture, but the the pictures included on the backs of books, I definitely prefer the old black and white ones, and I think that is a really cool picture. And it has some gorgeous illustrations, looks like it was originally pen and ink, so that will be really interesting, it sounds very, very good. The next one, again, this, these are all from the same eBay lot, is also, of course, by Stephen King. Uh, and it is Everything's Eventual, 14 Dark Tales. So I think it goes without saying that this is, of course, a collection of his short stories, which again, you know, I'm a short, 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 short story writer myself and trying to ease into the horror genre. So I am looking forward to it. And the, bo and the books, uh, and the stories included in this collection are Introduction, Practicing the Almost Lost Art. So I'm really hoping that's like him talking about his... Yeah, it's like him talking about his experience writing, like how he did it, that sort of thing. Um, so the stories themselves are Autopsy Room 4, The Man in the Black Suit, All That You Love Will Be Carried Away, The Death of Jack Hamilton, In the Death Room, The Little Sisters of Illuria, I think is how you say that name, E-L-U-R-I-A, say my name? Um, Everything's Eventual, LT's Theory of Pets, oh my god, I hope that's not like a horror story based around animals. I don't like that. Like, I won't read Cujo for those reasons. Um, the Road Virus Heads North, Lunch at the Gotham Cafe, That Feeling You Can Only Say When, That Feeling You Could Only Say What It Is in French. I don't know French. Uh, 1408, Writing the Bullet, Lucky Quarter, and that's it. So this is a hardback, and I think this was the only, yeah, it was the only hardback in this lot. Um, I think this is a 2002 printing. Yeah. So I am looking forward to reading this, especially now that I realize that there's like a little bit of him talking about uh, his writing because myself, you know, getting back into him for the, for like my own personal gain, not just enjoyment. Um, I think this is going to be super valuable. And I have heard a lot of good things here on booktube about the one short story in this collection, the man in the black suit. So I am excited for this. And again, that was the only hardcover I got, and I do think older hardcovers are really cool to have. Okay, so then we have three more books that came from this lot. And this one was a little bit of a... I don't really want it, but the rest of the, the, rest of the lot is so good that I can't turn it down. Oh my gosh, the cat is climbing up my leg. Ow. Um, but that is The Dark Tower 4. So it's the fourth book in his Dark Tower series. I just realized you can't see that. Um... And it is Wizard and Glass. And I think this is really cool. It's an older trade paperback. It was done by Plume. Yeah, Plume Publishing. I don't think I've ever had a book from that publishing house. Um, and looks like this was when, this was printed when this was like the newest the newest book in the Dark Tower series. Guys, I'm so sorry, my cat is 12 weeks old, kitten, so he is very playful and having a lot of fun right now. But not me, not so much. It's because that's steady. Yeah, let me find 
see if I can find like the printing information here at the front. 1997. Yeah, so looks like this was a first printing, but I can't be sure. I don't want to make that claim because I think first printings usually are a little bit more valuable, but I certainly did not buy this for the value. Um, I have never, I have not read the Dark Tower series, but I do know it is a dark fantasy. Um, and I don't think I've ever read any of Stephen King's fantasy. I have read his science fiction. We all remember my insomnia video, me talking about, you know, his novel insomnia. Um, so it may surprise some of you that I bought so many Stephen King books, but nonetheless, here we go. This is the fourth in the Dark Tower series. The next book I have heard so many good things about, and that is Stephen King's 112263. I know this is a um, historical fiction more so than a lot of them are, but it's focusing on like the conspiracy theories behind the Kennedy assassination. Um, it starts out with a high school English teacher, which I do think is interesting because I know Stephen King himself was an English, a high school English teacher, and I mean, that's what I'm going to school to do my, you know, for my career. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to kind of look into this, like, really cool character that I resonate with going through these things. Um, so, I mean, the summary, I can just read it to you. Uh, life can turn on a dime or stumble into the extraordinary, as it does for Jake Epping, a high school English teacher in a Maine town. Are all of his towns always in Maine? Because wasn't Salem's lot, Jerusalem's lot, wasn't that in Maine? And like Derry, Maine was where insomnia took place. This guy does know that there's like places outside of Maine, right? And I don't think that's a real, real town. Either one of them. Okay, while grading essays by his GED students, Jake reads a gruesome and thrilling piece penned by janitor Harry Dunning. 50 years ago, Harry somehow survived his father's sledgehammer slaughter of his entire family. Jake is blown away. But an even more bizarre secret comes to light when Jake's friend, Al, owner of the local diner, enlists Jake to take over the mission that has become his obsession, to prevent the Kennedy assassination. How? By stepping through a portal in the diner's storeroom and into the, area, into the era of Ike and Elvis, of big American cars, sock hops, and cigarette smoke. Finding himself in warm-hearted Jody, Texas, Okay, so he does know that there are other states. Um, Jake begins a new life, but all turns in the road lead to a troubled loner named Lee Harvey Oswald. The course of history is about to be rewritten and become heart-stoppingly successful. Suspenseful. I dare you to tell me that this does not sound amazing. It is intimidating because it is huge. I mean, like, I have little hands anyway, so, you know, to, you take that, to, do with that what you will. Um, but... I am looking forward to this. I do enjoy historical fiction and I can't wait to see his take on the 1950s because I know Christine took place in the 70s with a 50s car. Um, so I think it's really cool to see him jumping uh, from like era to era in history. I, yeah, I think it's something that he can, he's going to be able to do very well uh, because the way he jumps entire dimensions. So, you know, whatever. I think this is the last book in this lot. Looks like it. And it does still have an original price tag on it from Walmart, but that is It by Stephen King. And everybody knows this book is enormous, like freakishly huge. Um, and looking at the print makes me want to throw up a little bit because it is teeny tiny. Uh, but at least the pages are like a normal, normal weight. Um, I don't think I need to talk too much about this. It follows a killer clown. Um, yeah, this is where the red balloon and the you'll float to comes from. I have been told that the ending is quite powerful in that, you know, you feel a lot of things. So I'm curious about what that is actually going to mean for me, like whether I get super involved with it and love it. Um, I was told about a scene, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, that does involve animal torture in this. And I have a big problem with books that profit off of that because you know, animal abuse is not funny, and it's still something, like, really, that we still deal with a lot. I mean, I saw a headline, it was on Facebook the other day, that they found, I think it was 14 dogs in garbage bags along a North Carolina creek. I mean, that's just wrong, and I just, I hate, the same way I hate to see John Green profiting off of kids with cancer, I hate to see Stephen King, no matter how famous he is, how great he is, profiting off of portraying animal torture. I mean, I guess you could argue that 
with all horror, you're profiting off of human misery, but I think it's a little bit different when it's a human writing about a human. Just my take, but you know, do with that what you will. So the next lot is also from eBay. And if you'll give me a second, I have to like bend down and scoop these up because they're on the floor and I have some major back issues. So I will be right back. Okay, so the next lot of books that I bought on eBay, I think are gonna surprise some people, <laughs> but that is, oof, let me see if I can lift them up. They all go together, so just wanted to get them in one spot. It is The Twilight Saga by Stephanie Meyer. So I read the first book, Twilight, when I was probably 12. I was, I was in middle school, but I was pretty young. Um, and I actually liked it. So this book I have read before. Obviously not this copy, because um, I just bought it. But I have read it before, and I did like it when I was younger. Much, much younger. Um, I just realized that there is a page torn. That's great. Hopefully that's just like a sneak peek. There's no page. There's page numbers. Okay, so it looks like that was just from like a sneak peek or something of the next book. It's an epilogue. I mean, I've read this one before, so I'm not too pissed off about it, but that's a little frustrating. I was not told about that. Um, but so yeah, the first book is Twilight, then what was it? New Moon, Eclipse, and then Breaking Dawn. Um, so I read the first one. I really liked it. I was young though. Uh, the second one I started and hated it. I mean, I hated, hated it. I was later middle school. I think I might have been in high school at that point. I thought Bella was just the worst, whiniest character I've ever come across. So I have not read Eclipse and Breaking Dawn. But they kept coming up in my recommended when it came to horror, paranormal stuff. So I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I'll, I'll try them again. And uh, the summer I wanted to do a readathon where I just plowed through all four books. Um, at one time because I do enjoy some YA garbage and this is top-notch YA garbage so you know why not give it a try and I do want to see if after receiving an education in English you know like a formal college education whether that changes my view of the story as a whole or um, the writing because I do remember the writing like even you know at 12 being like thinking it could have been put a little bit better at some points um, and I was watching, I think his name was Crimson Rogue, was his name? He had read Breaking Dawn, or maybe it was New Moon, and was talking about like what trash the writing was. So I am really curious to go back over it now after having gotten an English degree, or almost getting an English degree, seeing what it's actually like. Sorry, I had to go get the dog out of trouble. Um, but the thing I would caution you on buying books when they come off of eBay um, they the seller was selling just you know sets of four like it was the whole series um, and I get the impression that he had multiple lots available um, I would definitely try to find out what the condition of the books is because obviously I mean this one has a whole page ripped out um, let's see I, I'm so afraid I'm gonna drop all these new moon my copy has just a slightly bent cover it's banged up it's not in the best shape but it's not bad I mean it's very readable um, Eclipse about the same deal covers kind of bent especially the dust jacket is kind of scratched up um, and then Breaking Dawn is obviously has been stored where there was a lot of light or where there was a good amount of heat because from what I know it takes quite a bit to turn uh, the pages of a hardcover completely yellow uh, versus a uh, paperback book. I'm curious, let me see when this was published. Oh, this is a first edition. Oh, that's cool. I don't like Twilight, <laughs> but that's really cool. Um, I do really enjoy YA fiction, so having a first edition of a YA classic is, that's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, look out for this this summer. I am going to do a readathon of all four books and then Maybe I'll like them, but I don't think so. <laughs> and then do videos talking about them. Okay, so now we've gone through a bunch of used books, a bunch of secondhand, and I love getting secondhand books, especially with Stephen King because his books are so creepy, and I think it's kind of cool to have a copy that looks kind of creepy. <laughs> like, it's definitely seen some, seen some shit. 
um, but these next four books are ones that I did buy brand new from my local Barnes and Noble and one of them is quite a departure from Stephen King um, and the first one is that book we're going to talk about and that is The Duke and I by Julia Quinn I don't know why I can never remember her name but this is the book that inspired Bridgerton and although I have not seen it I plan on watching it soon and I have heard that this is very Jane Austen-esque Pride and Prejudice and I just love Jane Austen period so I am very excited to read this um I just to see what all the hype's about like I think it's really cool that something in the style of Jane Austen has gotten the popularity that it has recently so I'm very excited for that it's a cute little mass market paperback um, the second book is one that I found like sitting where it definitely did not belong in the bookstore so I am quite excited to read this because it was just something I happened upon and couldn't find any other copies of it in the store and that is Dracula's Child by J.S. Barnes um, so I can just read the back because I I don't know anything about it never heard of it never seen it before couldn't even find any other copies um, so it starts out the dark heart of Bram Stoker's classic is reborn. It has been some years since Jonathan and Mina Harker survived their ordeal in Transylvania and, after vanquishing Count Dracula, returned to England to try and live ordinary lives. But shadows linger long, and the older their son Quincy gets, the deeper the shadows at the heart of the Harker family. And on the continent, a new evil is arising. A naturalist brings a new species of bat to London. Two English gentlemen on their separate tours of the continent find a strange chaotic love for each other and stumble into a calamity far worse than either has imagined and the vestiges of something thought long ago forgotten is finally beginning to stir. I get the feeling that this isn't a first book in a series um, but again I don't know anything about it. Um, it's a recent publish. It was this is the first edition uh, a May 2020 printing. Um, so I think maybe this is actually a first book in a series. Yeah, and I wonder if this is going to be a standalone or not. Um, but it sounds like it follows a lot of different viewpoints, and I do really enjoy both reading and writing books that change perspectives. Um, and this just sounds like a really cool version of, you know, Dracula classic vampire brought to life. And especially like, you know, I, I just hauled the Twilight book, so I think that'll be a very good departure from sparkly vampires. So then... The last two books that I have recently acquired from the bookstore are both Stephen King, and that would be The Stand and The Shining. So I'll start with The Stand. I have not read this book yet. It is freakishly long, like a lot of his stuff. This is the uncut edition. It is over 1,100 pages, and the print is teeny tiny, thaw. Yeah, it's enormous. Um, and I do know that this follows like a post-apocalyptic situation where there's been a virus that like wiped out 99% of humanity very very quickly and then this is following the ones that weren't fortunate enough to be wiped out automatically. Um, I'm a little nervous to read this because after having gone through everything with COVID the past year, I mean I had COVID, it sucks. Um, I was so sick for a while. Luckily I didn't, I was never hospitalized, I was never nothing, but it sucks and after having had a virus that has killed people, it just, I don't know, like I'm, I'm nervous to read a book about, you know, something so much worse than COVID. Um, I've heard that there's a lot of different characters in here to keep track of, so there's a lot that intimidates me about this, but it is one of his like most well-known classics. And as someone who's trying to get into writing horror, I think, I feel like I really do need to like read up on some of his best known examples. And of course, The Shining, I did read this in high school, um, but it was a copy from the library and I did not keep it, of course, and I wanted my own because this and what was it, Christine? I don't know why I always forget that off the top of my head, but this and Christine were my favorites when I was reading going through his books originally. Um, it's a good ghost story, haunted hotel, um, like just set into madness. Like it has a little bit of everything and that I just, I love it. I love, love, love that. So yeah, then we have The Shining and the next few that I have to get, if you'll give me a second. 
So these are also secondhand. They are also Stephen King books and they are the first three books of the Dark Tower series. Um, so that means The Gunslinger, The Drawing of Three, which is the second book I think is kind of funny, and The Wastelands. These three books did come from thrift books. Like I said, I had never used them before and I didn't know much about their like quality rating scale, like what that entailed. Um, so the first package that came, because they did come separately, was The Drawing of Three and The Wastelands. So The Drawing of Three, my copy is a uh, mass market paperback and it is just fine. Like it is clear, it's clearly a little bit older. Um, let me see if I can find a date in it. Looks like this is a 2003 paperback. So it's as old as my my younger siblings. It's 18 years old now. Um, but I mean, honestly, there's nothing wrong with the binding. The pages are yellowed. It smells like a used book. Yeah, got no problem with it whatsoever. And the second one that came in the same package as the drawing of three was the wastelands. So the biggest problem I have with thrift books is the little fucking stickers that they put on the spines. Um, I didn't know they did that or I probably would have ordered, ordered a hardback. Um, but this copy has definitely been through the ringer. Um, like I said, I didn't know about their like quality rating, like what they considered good versus very good versus acceptable. So I just went with the cheapest option because um, I'm a college student, really shouldn't be spending a whole lot of money anyway. So I went with acceptable. And I mean, you just saw that copy of the drawing of three, there's nothing wrong with it. This one is obviously a lot older and Oh, I think it's blowing it out, but I hope you can see. There you go. Maybe you can. There you go. You can kind of see it now. Like where the cover is kind of peeled away from the spine. Um, so that's a little bit frustrating because it's brand it's not new, but it's brand new to me, and it's peeled all the way up to. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. Um, it's really neat older paperback. I really like trade paperbacks to read period, but it's frustrating to have one that's already in bad condition when I haven't read it yet. And I'm super rough on books like you guys know. Um, it looks like this is a first plume printing. So this is also from Pl plume publishers. Um, this is January 1992. So I mean, it's, it's certainly got some age on it. Um, but I just wish I'd known a little bit more about what the acceptable condition really meant. Um, and if you guys know a way that there's like a space where you can go see like what issues might be with the books, maybe I just missed it altogether. I mean, that's, you know, that's very possible. Um, but yeah, and then the binding is totally coming apart right there. So I'm going to have to be careful with this one. It's cool to have an older book, but I'm just frustrated that, I mean, I only paid like $4 for it, but it's still, it's frustrating to have a new book that's new to me be in that bad a condition when I just didn't know any better. Um, this last book is the first book in the Dark Tower series and that is The Gunslinger. And this book is a little bit of a cautionary tale for you guys because I did get this from Thrift Books. This just arrived today and it is filthy. It is disgusting. Um, I don't know if you guys can see all of the smudging across the front is dirt. Like you can kind of see the texture there. Um, it looks like it's just straight up dirt like potting soil on it and I just don't understand and like the spine I really hope that's not mold on it but the spine is kind of gross the back is fine so it's like it was laying down in a stack and like got crapped on I mean and this really I just don't want to touch it too much until I clean it up but I thought I'd show you guys and again the freaking sticker on the spine um I really don't have a problem with an older book like as long as it's still readable it's readable um, and there are some times where I really like, you know, kind of a tattered paperback, but tattered and just being dirty is two different things. Like, especially with all like the COVID stuff right now, like, yes, we're starting to come out of it, but I'm more of a germaphobe than I've ever been. And to send me a book where I think all you would have to do is wipe it down. I just, I think it's bad business. Like, um, I'll, you know, obviously I'm going to try to clean this up myself, but I mean, they're a business, <laughs> like a big business too. Like it's not, it's not some local used bookstore that maybe it just slipped through the cracks. Ugh, it just, I don't know. It's kind of frustrating. And I mean, obviously like it's, it looks like it's like built up in layers. So it was a long time. I, I don't know. Like maybe I'm just oversensitive, 
but that just kind of bothered me so I am gonna clean it up before I put it on my shelf because especially if it is mold or something I don't want that all over other books um so yeah that pretty much yeah, I hate to end on a sour note but that pretty much wraps up my uh, recent book haul I did get a couple other things like you can see behind me a Court of Silver Flames that's what that's called right yeah a Court of Silver Flames the new Sarah J Mass book I did get Chain of Iron the new Cassandra Clare book um and I don't oh here it is I got a book by a wonderful guy it is called Purgatory by Jeff Mann um Jeff Mann is an English professor I have him right now for my creative nonfiction class and he is just fantastic I love him to pieces he is one of the most interesting people I've ever met he is like I, I just I can't promote this guy enough like please come to Virginia Tech please take anything by him in the English department you will not you will not be sorry um he's largely a poet but he also writes fiction and this is one of his fiction books um it's an lgbtq romance um between two civil war soldiers in uh, west virginia he's also from west virginia and i just i just love it so much um i don't i have never read much LGB, lgbtq fiction period um other than you know red white and royal blue carry on was carry on i, I don't think was that great but um, so I'm looking forward to reading a good example of LGBTQ fiction by a person within the community. Um, like I just, I haven't even read this book, but I can't promote it enough. Like, please, 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 please go on Amazon because I think that's the only place you can get them. Please, 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 please order anything you can find by Jeff Mann. He is just a darling. I love him so much. Um, I'm also taking another class by him next semester called Appalachian Literature. So hopefully there will be even more gems to come out uh, out of that class um, related to this. So I'm very, very excited. I love historical fiction and um, the Civil War has always been a particular interest for me within history and especially like again in the context of, you know, I'm not from West Virginia, I'm from Virginia, um, but it's fairly close to home. You know, I had a lot of family in the Civil War, so I think it's going to be super exciting. And I know there is a second book. I think this is a duology. So I'm very, very excited to read. Oh my God, no, I put it down on the dirty book. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very excited to be reading uh, his writing. And he was so kind. Um, when I first started, I've had some issues with my back recently and I had to miss a class to go to a doctor's appointment. And he was so incredibly kind about like, hey, you know, that's okay like you know miss the class if you need to you got to get this taken care of and then he even sent me an Amazon gift card to help me get better and that's how I was able to purchase a uh, Court of Silver Flames and a Chain of Iron with uh, the gift card that he sent me so Jeff Mann is an absolute angel um, please please take his class like any way you can support him please do it he is a wonderful guy um, yeah so that's a little bit more of a positive note, I guess. And this is a super long video, so I'm going to end it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was fun to do a book haul that big because I've never... <laughs> I've just never done a book haul that big. Like, I haven't been able to go to the library sale. Like, we have it, my library in my hometown where I would buy, like, a crap load of books because um, mass market paperbacks are only a quarter. Um... So I haven't, I, it's been a long time since I've gotten this many books at a time, but it's kind of thrilling. Um, I understand shopping addicts a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums up the video. Um, I'm going to do an update video because some things have changed. Um, yeah, I'm going to let you guys know in the next one. So stay tuned for that. And again, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.